to their home. Uh, I know how to email. See, some of us don't have email. We don't have to do it. So how do you have to notify the people that don't have to do uh, Let me tell you how typically we would do it. Yeah. Okay, this is the area that we'll talk about. When we remove this portion of the bridge, there's a roadway underneath. Mm -hmm. That's a steel structure. Most likely we have to close this street for the weekend, including night work. We would typically work, first of all, we would get the LAPD permit to allow us to do night work and for, for noise barriers. Second, we would notify the council office. We work closely with the council office. We would have a flyer to go out um, through email, through council office, through public affairs, through with our um, public outreach consultant. We can have a flyer, we can send out email in advance. We will be working with the Department of Transportation. We will be have uh, signage at both sides, uh, both sides of the bridge to notify the, um, passive, the, the drivers that this portion will be closed on <coughs> those dates. We would have uh, people going to the community to hand out flyers to notify the people in the neighborhoods so that everyone we would do everything that we can possibly can. We do have a web page. We have a Facebook. We notify people. I have a list of emails of uh, people that I contact with. We can send out a bunch of emails and let people know in advance that this will be closed on such date. Let's hope that I, do, I hope I get mine. Not an email, because I don't have a computer. I hope I get the flyer. Right. Because Soto, Mission, Huntington are secondary highways and trucks are permitted on secondary highways. We cannot prohibit trucks from being on secondary highways. Yeah. Here. Uh, you said you're going to have the roads are going to be closed during construction. What are you going to do about the rigs that are coming in delivering equipment and taking out equipment during construction if you're only going to have two lanes in all directions? At no point during constructions, except probably night or weekend, connect a closure, that any of the roads will be closed completely. I understand that. They will my be question, open. My question is, where are the trucks going to run through? Which road? If you're going to have two lanes closed, I mean two lanes open in this direction. You're going to have big rigs coming in and out. Yeah, OK. Well, even, even if we have one lane is open, rigs will be able to have access to the local business if they have delivery. You're only going to have one lane open for regular traffic, and the other one will be used for rigs. No. If you look at the roadside traffic control plan, we can go over after the meeting. We have two lanes open during construction, especially northbound. So rigs will have access. If you have a truck going to the food market or uh, the ranch market, they will have access to it. Yeah. He's, referring, he's referring to the, the big rigs that you're going to be using to bring in your, you know, your diggers and your... Uh, oh, I see. No. Contractor is not permitted 
to, to use one of the lanes as a staging area. The lanes has to be open. Contractor will not be able to park in the lanes or have a, a trucks or a cranes or anything taking the lane out. There will, they will need to bring the equipment into the well, area. It so will be like well, any other You're going to have to grade, vehicle. like you said, you're going to grade before you actually start taking the bridge down. So how are you going to go ahead and grade and not have anything come in and out? Well, we can, not take lanes, so we can explain it over. Yeah. Later on, I can show you all okay. the yeah. Sir? You know, I've, I've heard already, I'm just asking you, this is the now safety issue that the bridge being knocked down because of the railings and because of the no crosswalk and because of structurally it's, it, it's inadequate. But what I don't understand, and maybe you can help me on this, is that in 1998, the city had funding to replace those guardrails. It was, it was funding was there, it was just for that, and it, they weren't done. In the year 2000, the developer who put the apartment on the right-hand side of, of the bridge, he was made, he was made before he could get any he permits. He was required to build a, total, a full crosswalk across uh, Hunter Drive, Soto, and, and uh, Canto, Canto uh, uh, Drive, a full crosswalk, I mean, across with the lights and, and, and you know, path. The money was there, not for the city, for the, the developer. And again, it was, it was taken somewhere else. Now you're using the excuse of the bridge not having these safety things and, and, and being dangerous, but that's what you guys made it because you guys didn't install these things that the funding was there for 13 years ago. Now all these accidents that happened there in these past years, you're liable for. I don't understand why the bridge didn't knock down if that money was there for these for these safety concerns and it wasn't used. To me, it's a setup. You want to turn it down for big rigs, for traffic, but through there. Does make any sense if you don't use that money that's there 15 years ago for these things, and now you're saying that oh, that's the reason why we're turning it down? I mean, come on. I mean, why is why why are you wait so long to 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 use the safety concern when the money was there all this time? Another thing is that bridge is 14 feet uh, virtually, right? What is the standards for the federal? What would they um, require for 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 bridges and other passes? Okay. Um, let, let me answer the first part of the question. If we were to remove the railing and fix to improve the railing back in the 1998 or so, um, the railing won't solve the problem. Um, uh, like I mentioned before, vertical clearance is also another problem to the bridge. So if we want to do it, we have to lower the street, which is this street. We have to lower this street for approximately about two feet or so uh, in order to do that. Uh, second, also, we have to improve the railing on this but also the width of the bridge does not meet the current standard. So typically, if we want to do that, we have to widen the both sides of the bridge, lower the street underneath, and we still have a very confusing intersections in the area. And it's still one of the most dangerous intersections in the area. Okay, so, by the way, let me emphasize this. The bridge is safe. I'm not saying that the bridge is not safe. The bridge is safe uh, to drive on, to walk on, to do anything for truck traffic as well. What I'm saying is that um, it does not meet the current standards. Okay, under the federal guidelines, uh, through Caltrans, who do who do the bridge rating, this bridge does not meet the rating requirement, which is about 80 percent. It's lower than 8 percent. That's why it's qualified for federal funding. We've been working on this project approximately in 19 and uh, probably 2003, 2004. Um, one of the reasons that we, why it took so long, mainly because of the uh, complexity of the project, the traffic, the uh, complexity of the design, and also because of the right-of-way acquisitions that took us approximately three years to go through to bring us to today. Can we just say, the reason why it didn't meet the, the 80% because it had no bridge readings that would have been upgraded, because it had no crosswalk. That's why it didn't meet the 80% that it needed to meet to be you know, from that point down. And you guys did that happen. Do you know what I'm saying? <coughs> the same excuse that, that we're tearing it down, the money was there for already. If it had been up, updated, like, in, you know, when the when when funding was there, there'd be no need to tear it down. But you guys just, that, that well, well, let, let me say this. Keep in mind, the bridge was built in 1937 for the electric red cars. There's no more red cars on it. There's no reason to have the bridge. How many other bridges have also been built during that time and I'm being torn down? Only this one's being turned out. You know, I have a list of bridges that being turned down all across the road, all across the Miami Park. They were built back then. 
And now this one being turned down, so it's going to be retrofitted. This one too. Uh, upgrade it. Don't turn it down. Upgrade it. What's it going to that?
None of the traffic is being detoured to residential streets. The small residential streets. They might be detoured to, uh, uh, I mean, uh, to Eastern is, is secondary highway. It's not residential side streets. So you might have some traffic using Eastern to get to Arlington. While construction is being done, you mentioned that uh, you're going to notify people in advance that delineation, email, councilman office, uh, brochures, flyers. But most people that don't live in the area, they come from way back to each part of Pasadena, Arcadia, they should be if not aware of what's going on. They should somehow seeing the signs that are posted in advance, like major construction to do, that state uh, closure of this lane or that between this date and that time. So that also is a notification for those others, correct? Uh, all the, yeah, I mean, uh, as Doug earlier mentioned, we will have a CMS, changeable message signs, at least two weeks prior to beginning of constructions for not only for the residents, but also for the commuters who will use, uh, hoping that to scare them away from the air and use <laughs> different routes, because, uh, I mean, take First Street. Uh, it's a major highway uh, over the LA River, and it was tied up in construction for many years. And uh, traffic went down 50%. Even after we, First Street the Bridge was open, we still didn't get back to the same traffic volumes where we had before construction. Because once you get into the habit of changing your routes, it will kind of take you some time to figure out, oh, well, you know what? Then I have a new roadway. I'm going to go back. So obviously, there will be CMSs, changeable message signs. And it's not going to take long to figure out we're going to have a major construction here, especially for commuters. The message will be sent very clearly from probably the first week. Thank you. I'd like to know how this, this field is going to impact the elementary school in the area. Do you know how this is going to impact the school? Now that the schools have opened, so there's the full spring, full swing in October with bus Definitely, we're going to work with our. Uh, there is no construction fronting any school. The construction will be on Soto Mission okay, by the bridge. Okay, I didn't say. I didn't. That, that's not what I said. I said, how is this going to impact the, the traffic? Access? The roadways are open. The lanes are open. So the school buses will have access to get to the bus to the school. We're not shutting down any lanes. Or that. I was asking how it's going to impact the traffic on Eastern, on Huntington. Well, um, let me say this. Um, we're going to work with our consultant, with our uh, public uh, outreach consultant to meet with various um, agencies within the area. But definitely we'll, we'll meet the school and give them the flyer in advance. Um, they will know that we'll be in construction. They will know that which route will be best for our bus drop-off. Well, for the parents to take from certain directions. We've done that on, on, uh, on first Street bridge project, so um, it worked out uh, nicely. Now, I can tell you this, in, uh, in October, you probably won't see much construction going on because you will see some utility relocation work, some preparation work that we're working on. Um, I don't know if we're gonna um, do any traffic uh, staging in October. Uh, again, the contractor has a lot of work to do before they implement the traffic control plan stage one. So as far as October, uh, I don't see that's going to happen. But definitely, I will put our consultant with me with the school principal. The school and, and typically, typically what we do is um, we reach out to 
the department, uh, I'm sorry, the LA Unified School District and their transportation department and talk with all of their heads that do the school routing and their dispatch. So we make sure that they understand what the impacts are gonna be up and coming with, with regards to construction activities. So their, the bus drivers are always in the know. Um, Dr. Williams just mentioned that the school has no knowledge of projects whatsoever as to we're in the we're in the works right now in setting up meetings and meeting with um, PTAs and that's how we reach the parents that we get through the PTAs and we also get um, we have to get permission we can't just walk on the school grounds we have to get permission from the unified school district to enter the school ground to, and show them what we're going to be giving out and they have to approve it so it's a little bit of a process but we are in that process right now so we will be working closely. As a plan and advice, a lot of our parents work. I would recommend that you do an evening meeting and pass up flyers not only to my kids in Wright Elementary, but Malnova Elementary, Wilson, because those parents use the, right. the street. And that we are in that process so right now. Because if, PK, if you go to a PTA meeting, you only have a handful of parents. Yeah. I didn't say that we're only going to do that. No. I'm just, I, but I do, I understand what you're talking about. Yeah. And also, um, in order to get the information to the parents, we get the school so they can pass it out to the kids to take home to their parents and that's how we um, reach the parents as well who won't maybe not might not come to a night meeting because they have to work at night or something like that so we we have all of these different approaches that we um, are going to uh, these different angles that we're going to take and reaching out to the parents the uh, transportation department or the school buses and of course the um, faculty and staff well, sir what is the secondary nature or perhaps uh, here and why we need to take that down. Uh, I, I'm not convinced that, for lack of better terminology, an engineer can buy and say, hey, you know what, that doesn't uh, meet current standards. Let's get some money together and tear it down. Is there a secondary reason, or a primary reason, why we're taking that down? And secondly, uh, following up on that, because it doesn't meet requirements, does that make it Mandatory to take it down. Um, um, the, the bridge has, um, as, I, as I mentioned before, is essentially obsolete mainly because of the width of the bridge, the railing, and the vertical clearance. Now, uh, under the federal guidelines, as I said, um, the bridge rating is below 80 percent. You can call it or 80. Um, we call it bridge rating sufficiency rating. When it's under 80, the local um, government, the local agency um, can apply for federal grant and um, the federal will give the grant to do the improvement. Uh, the improvement includes, um, includes widening, lowering the street for some projects, uh, widening, improve the railing, or even remove it um, to re eliminate uh, the uh, the de deficiency of the bridge. Now, why why are we removing the bridge? Okay, um, if you look at the intersection, it's very confusing. Uh, and also, we do have records of accidents of this uh, of this area, especially underneath the bridge. And as I mentioned before, again, the red car, the bridge was built for the Pacific Electric red cars, and the red cars are not in commission anymore. The tracks were removed in 1960. And we, we don't need to have a bridge to separate the, uh, the traffic from the red car. Is it mandatory um, for the current statute to take that? It says take that down because it doesn't fit the standards. Is it mandatory? No. The it Fed will not tell you whether. This, that's my question. Right, the Fed is not going to tell you whether you have to remove the bridge or not okay, remove so the bridge. So. But the bridge, the Fed said you will have a bridge that's um, deficient. It's eligible uh, for federal grant. You have to do some improvement to it. You have to do something to it. If you just put a nuke under there, a, a dirty side, that bridge will be there when the dust clears. I can, you know. The bridge is not structurally deficient. As I mentioned before, it's the dimensions of the bridge. It's the width of the bridge, the railing, and the vertical clearance. And again, the, if you look at the intersection of the area, their visibility problem, there's very confused uh, configuration of the area. Um, there's traffic issue as well as the configuration of the existing uh, bridge and the street underneath the bridge. One more point, I mean, isn't that like water under the bridge? Because we are really way beyond what you 
your comments are. I mean, there was a full EIR. No, wasn't there? No, 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 there? No, no, there? No, no, there? Well, let, let me say this. Uh, since you mentioned, we did have the environmental document which caused negative neck deck that went through. Uh, we had public meetings back in probably 2003, 2004. Three of them only. Just three meetings. Okay, no it's, okay, it might be three meetings, but did I tell you this? We have met the requirements as far as the environmental document. We have three community <laughs> meetings. We have the negative neck deck. That was approved by the Board of Public Works, forwarded to the council. The council adopted back in 2004. That was approved. The uh, statute of limitation is six months. After that, we did not have any comments from, from anybody. So the environmental document was approved. Technically, we have an approved project. Yeah. Yeah. Another question, I'm sorry, was that, is there another reason, though, for that to come down? Is there any other secondary or perhaps even primary reason why you take that out of it? Other than it just doesn't meet the current code. Is there anything else going on here that we don't know about? So, so the, the reason, as I mentioned, the, the, the functionally obsolete it's traffic is the problem in that area. Visibility is, is uh, the problem in that area. Um, the uh, confused configuration. Okay, we're First stop, I know the uh, in the contract. The contract we notify the uh, metro, and metro will work closely with us uh, to put the notice notice in advance. And the bus stop will be relocated. We're talking about probably two blocks from wherever the stops are today. It's not going to be as far. Uh, again, I can't answer because depend depending on the stage of the construction, depending on the construction activities, where they will be relocated. Uh, I can so show you on the plan. Yeah. Where the so, bus uh, by the way, we do have our traffic engineers, Bear and Dominic, and we have previous project manager, George Wine, back in the back. He uh, will be here, will answer some of your specific questions. Um, you know. Actually, there's uh, the plans, the first plan we have, we have a bus uh, just under the bridge, bus stop. That will be relocated just. Uh, south of the bridge by the, the ramp from uh, Mission to Soto ramp. So it's, it's not actually even too long. It's only like 100 feet, 150 feet will be relocated. And then we'll bring it back for restoration. Project and we just have to sacrifice 